Good evening, John McNulty, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. How are you doing? Oh, very well, thanks, Denise. Nice to see you. And you, and you. Um, really looking forward to our chat and getting to mm -hmm. know you. <laughs> First of all, can we ask how how did it all start? Did, were you always an artist? Did you go to art college and know I, that? Uh, yeah, I, I suppose, uh, well, uh, when I really wanted to start painting and so on was uh, probably in secondary school. I had a very good art teacher, John Coyle, and uh, uh, he was very encouraging. So I entered the Texaco art competition in final year, you know, in sixth year, and I came second in that. So uh, I really, after that, just wanted nothing else, I suppose, and went on to uh, art school for uh, three years, 67. Wow. And uh, it was when I went, and it was uh, a time of a lot of student upheaval um, around Europe, but in the art college too, because we, the mm -hmm. problem at the time with the art college was that you only got a diploma when you were there if you served yeah. out your full term, um, which Sorry, wasn't. Which art college did you go to? NCAD. Ah, okay. Yeah, I mean, which was at the time was in part of Leinster House. It was it yeah. was the the old stables apparently of Leinster House. It was between the library, the National Library, and Leinster House itself ah. in the corner there. Yeah. But but uh, so we spent a lot of time, you know, occupying the place and you know putting up, making a big fuss about it. And I left uh, after three years, just um, for one reason and another, anyway. But. Uh, uh, I went on to teach for a number of years, teach art um, I, in Dublin for a little while, and then down in Old Caslin County Meath for uh, three years I taught down there. And that was great. The kids were great. The atmosphere was great. Nice place. And enjoyed that. But I realized after uh, I had an exhibition in the of etchings in the Lincoln Gallery of Parliament Street, it was at the time. And... Uh, um, I realized that if I continued teaching, it was going to be harder and harder to produce enough work for shows and so on. So I decided to uh, throw it in and, and work full time as an artist. That's, that's a big decision, isn't it? Yeah. And you feel like if you don't do it at a particular time, well, you might miss the boat, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was time for me to do it, I guess. And um I was fortunate. I, I had been uh, printing etchings, uh, actually on a, a borrowed mangle with wooden rollers that I got from a local uh, auctioneer. And it was just what interested me at the time, particularly, was making etchings and working with the metals and materials and chemicals and all the rest of it and so on. I was making different, some abstract pieces, mostly landscapes. So um, I went to... Uh, Switzerland and I worked in uh, Atelier Raymond Mayer, who was a, 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 a printer, master printer, who uh, produced etchings for different uh, artists, clients, and so on, publishers. And uh, he was amazing. His ability was astounding. And uh, he ran a, a great workshop. I worked there for a bit. And uh, got some ideas and started producing my own work uh, um, and um, eventually started uh, working with a publisher in London then, London Contemporary Art, Anima Graphics and then London Contemporary Art. And uh, I was with them from probably 79 through to about uh, mid nineties. Wow, So, and was that a busy time for you? Uh, very busy, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, uh, I suppose at that time in Europe and, and certainly in Britain, there was um, a lot of interest in landscape etchings, landscape prints and so on. And uh, it's a market that's pretty much disappeared now. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the time it was, uh, it was, you know, there were art fairs were full of that sort of uh, etchings that I, at the moment, uh, it was trending. It's changed so much that uh, yeah. it's it's virtually unrecognizable. New new methods of printing, digital printing, and so on, uh, have changed things. But at the time, well, still etching, of course, is a great uh, medium, and uh, 
uh, and it's great fun to work with, but uh, the subject matter, if you like, has changed. Uh, at the yeah. time, I was primarily a landscape artist, you know, so. And was the la was your landscape work similar to the same type of m muted tones as well that you have now, or was it completely different? Well, it was different. Uh, uh, I suppose it was more, uh, well, just, uh, you know, winter trees would be a typical example of my work, you know, that kind of... Uh, yeah, you know, like leafless trees and uh, clouds blowing in the wind and, you know, rivers and streams and, you know, pathways, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it was uh, the, uh, it led on to commissions for, from the publishers for various other things, which were like J-class J racing yachts and, uh, uh, and so on that were, would certainly stretch you as a, as a craftsman. And I enjoyed working on those. I enjoyed producing those, you know. So luckily, they, we were able to keep going with that kind of work. And, uh, uh, and but until the mid '90s, as I say, and then that finished pretty much. Mm -hmm. So um, the the work, the the body of work that we're showing this week, and I, I mean, mm -hmm. you've been with the doorway gallery just probably less than a year. Um, so I've only really seen the farmyards and the tractors. So. Right, yeah. How did that all begin? It was that when you moved to the west of Ireland. Yes, yeah. Well, my I, when I was young, I spent a lot of time on my grandfather's farm. He was a, he had been a national school teacher, so I knew him mostly when he was retired, you know. But mm -hmm. um, it was in the farm in the Midlands. He had thirty acres or so, and he had a horse, and he had uh, uh, he, uh, he did well. My cousins would come out in the summertime, and we'd do. Uh, Save the hay. You know, we'd cut the the <laughs> horse would pull the clippers along and cut the grass, and, and we'd pile it up in the haycocks and jump up and down on it, and so on. You know, yeah. and uh, he had a trap for the with the pony. He'd always have a cow and maybe a calf would appear now and again, and grew vegetables, <laughs> grew oats for the chickens and and for a porridge. And uh, I, I I really uh, love the place, and a lot of my cousins. Were, have great memories of the place too you know it's gone out of the family now but um anyway uh, uh it got me thinking when we you know over the years after we moved here in 86 and into mayo uh, that the small family farm like that is disappearing very fast uh, yeah. mm -hmm. i mean the big contractors now that use large tractors and so on uh can cut the grass for farmers much cheaper and quicker than them going out and buying a tractor themselves. Mm. Uh, and um, it was all so, organic farming, wasn't it? I mean, that's what that's what we raised on. It was completely yeah. Different. It was completely different, and that nurturing aspect of you know the being safe to run around uh, and jump on haycocks and you know. <laughs> Climb, climb in barns and all that sort of thing. The barns themselves are uh, falling into disrepair in a lot of cases because mm -hmm. they, you know, the big hay bales now are wrapped usually and they're stored in the edge of a field and so on. And they're silage bales or they're hay bales uh, and, and they don't fit in the barns. So they don't need the barns to keep them dry. And uh, so you end up with barns then that have, uh, you know, like as I, as I, use occasionally a dresser or a table or something that has uh, objects from the house and maybe a chair yeah, and that's what I somebody... love about your work. yeah if you look a bit closer you can always see yeah little personal, <laughs> personal items and memories and so on yeah from people so the that aspect of them is is, st is still life and um, and in fact, the whole the entire paintings, those particular paintings generally are still lives themselves. You know, they're just an arrangement of the objects. I, so. But do you have uh, like reference of photographs around your studio to or do you is this do you work completely from memory then? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I occasionally see something, you know, when I'm driving. Yeah, certainly a couple of images. Uh, 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 you know, the I, strike me in particular were were places from near, around here. You know, the, you, uh, just driving past, you suddenly see something—an old tractor poking out of a barn or whatever it is. You know, but um, 
no, but generally those images are composed. You know, they're, the landscape is reflective of the area in South Mayo. Uh, it's kind of flat with gentle oh, hills, the, par the partry hills in the distance and so on. Um, uh, but the burns are ubiquitous. I mean, they're all over the place around here uh, and varying states of repair and so on. And the old tractors, uh, there's a very big vintage club, you know, uh, and they look after, they've got some great tractors around here, but they only use them for show pretty much. There's a few old Massey Fergusons and that held together with wire and things, and they're still going strong. But uh, but the uh, the paintings of the tractors themselves then are obviously are not realistic, you know. They're, I remember when we were on holidays in Tremor in Waterford, and there was a tractor fair, and it was quite impressive actually looking at all these big, huge tractors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> when you see them. <laughs> so what's the next plan? I've noticed for this show you have uh, two buses in oh, yeah. and, and I haven't seen you paint buses before. So was this a new idea as well or how did you get to this? Yeah, uh, I suppose it's like a, a bit of doodling now and again and come up with these ideas, you know, different things. And I noticed that when I was painting the buses then that, uh, you know, there's only a few people in them. I, I tried a couple of versions of more people and things. And I, I think it must reflect the social distancing now. Yeah, you know, there was only three or four people maybe in a bus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the one, uh, the first one of the two that you have now is uh, was, uh, what was it, Sun Holidays, I think. And uh, again, that's, uh, that's definitely a COVID thing about uh, the bus has the Sun Holiday on it, but it's not going there. <laughs> Yes, it's advertising non-existent flights, maybe to sunny places. Uh, so, and even of course, I've noticed you have the, your your little dogs as well going across. Oh, right. Yeah, you've kind of put your trademark on the bus. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 little symbols are yeah. The, I suppose it. Uh, you can tell a story with little symbols like the anchor and the mountains, you know, yeah. where you pull up yeah. the anchor and go walking with your dog or whatever it is, you know. Um, so it's uh, that's something I'll probably explore a little bit more, that idea, you know. But uh, like the generally speaking, uh, they're a bit cartoonish, mm -hmm. uh, you know, graphic designy kind of cartoonish. And that's that's. Uh, something I like to explore with the tractors too. You know, uh, the tractors are become objects. They're, they're drawn away from their functional use. They don't have motors. They have what look like rugs or patterns or designs on them and so on. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, um, so it's uh, separating them from the original activity they were intended for, I suppose. And the buses will probably end up the same way as they go on, who knows. Yeah. <laughs> what, what what they'll be full of before too long. Well, they, yeah. they, when I saw them in the gallery, they just make me smile. And I think that's so important with art, you know. Oh, it's, good, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. You, good, have, yeah. you should have that connection and just... Uh, yeah. You know, think, and the numbers on the bus, are they, they're, they're for real. They, they're actual buses you, you went in. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I suppose when I was in art school and, that and, and secondary school, I was associating the numbers on the south I was, I was always aware of the numbers on the south side you know they start the smaller numbers start towards the sea towards dublin bay so you have uh, black rock would be five seven and so on and then you go uh further to the west and you've got uh randler rath mines b15 and you know, harold's cross would be 16 bus and so on so yeah those were in that sort of area of uh yeah the south side I was associated with mostly those days. Mind you, an uncle and aunt of mine had a house up in from Condra, and uh, I spent a lot of time up there too, on and off, you know. So. It must have been great times back then, uh, having art college around up in two area and... Oh, and yeah, it was terrific, yeah. I mean, uh, well, the, the art college itself was difficult when I was there because of the, uh, you know, the upheavals that we had awful problems you know with the uh with the art college and spent a lot of time living I living in the art college and uh so on uh trying to get it changed from being just a diploma to a degree for one thing 
and so on. But um, but, uh, but, but Dublin then was like a sm- sorry. Did you remain friends with a lot of your colleagues? In like, or were you the only person that became a full time artist out of your year? Or uh, no, I'm sure there. Uh, no, I, I mean there was James McCarthy down in in uh, Dunmanway in Cork, and uh, no, there was a number of people there who would have uh, remained artists and so on. But uh, at that time, but um, it was like a small village, you know. I mean, you go out in the evening, you go up to you know, Kyo's or Toner's and Baggett Street or, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're basically were all student bars, I suppose, <laughs> when you were a student then. And, uh, you know, you bump into people, you get to know people, you know, from Trinity, whatever. Oh. Uh, so, so it was a great life. It was a great time there for a while. But, uh, uh, but I suppose at some point it had to move on. And uh, for me, it was... I. I, I went and started teaching and uh, mm. and ended up in Oldcastle and County Meath for a few years. Yeah, no, it's a great it's a great little journey, isn't it? And mm-hmm. how, how does your day start? We just we saw your video there of your studio, which looks fantastic. Oh, thanks. Um, so that yeah, that you was that always a studio space when you bought the house? No, it was um, uh, originally it was a garage for a truck and. Uh, uh, and a certain amount of carpentry. I think the man, he was a builder, the man who owned it uh, before he built it, actually, in the uh, 50s. It would have been 1955 or so. And um, uh, so we renovated it when we moved down. And, uh, it, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good space. And I, I kind of, when, I, when we were doing it, I put a bit extra insulation into it and so on. So it would be a comfortable place to go out and work encourage me to go out there you know so uh i suppose generally yeah go out there around 10 o'clock in the morning i tend to uh mostly put in a good week you know if uh, a couple of hours in the morning a couple of hours in the afternoon that kind of thing every day every do you work <coughs> or is excuse this, me uh, do you work seven days a week Ah, no, no, I'd work five, six, you know, that yeah. sort of thing. Depends on what's on. I mean, if I have a commission I have to get finished, mm-hmm. I'd be working on that, all right, uh, to make sure. But if it's my own deadline where I want to have a certain amount done, you know, six, eight weeks away or whatever, uh, it, life would be a bit easier. But I'll have four or five pieces going at the same time. So, you know, I'll switch between, you know, maybe the a, a farmyard image, let's say, and a tractor image or bus image or whatever, because uh, sometimes I'm in the mood for uh, working carefully and slowly, and other times I'm, I, I'd much rather work with texture or lash out a bit and, and try something entirely new or different, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, listen to music and, and uh, or the radio and just... Um, the time goes by and it's, it's great yeah. fun. And I'm glad you say that, you know, you mm-hmm. you smile when you see the, the buses because yeah, it's, mm-hmm. I, I hope sometimes, you know, the fun that you, you get from making pieces transfers, you know, to the audience as well. Absolutely. I, I, one of the, we, we, we first brought you to Amsterdam Art Fair last year and you, mm-hmm. you flew over. So, um, there was a couple there who bought a, two of pieces of your work, and it was great to yeah. get back from them as well. And, it know. was, yeah. And they were, uh, um, the, um, the, the gentleman was telling me he was a farmer originally, and uh, then for the, previous, for the last 10 years, uh, he, he just grew roses. So <laughs> there you go, Amsterdam. I love it, you know. <laughs> so he bought a tractor. Yeah, he bought a tractor and dog. <laughs> uh, and, and that was the thing about the tractor and dog series was that, um, you know, the dog is always waiting to go and do something, you know, to work. You know, the sheep dogs are always very active and uh, yeah. any of these dogs are usually waiting for the owner to come out, start up the tractor or, you know, head off down the road, whatever. And they're delighted to join in and go or after the sheep or cattle or whatever. So uh, when the tractor's not going yeah, they they're a bit sad. They're standing there waiting to go. So, <laughs> and it does it does say that in the painting. You've never been tempted to put the farmer anywhere in the in the work, have you? <laughs> well, I've I've a new one at the moment that has a farmer in it. All right, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? oh I'm dying to see that one. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. 
I think of, uh, you know, an artist like De Buffet, you know, well, there's not many like De Buffet, I suppose, but, um, <laughs> you know, he did these wonderful uh, uh, cars and things where the people's heads are full size the window that have noses sticking out the front or out the side yeah. and so on. Very cartoonish and fill the entire space, you know, uh, with lots of heavy texture and uh, great fun. I, I, I love those. So, yeah, you never know how this farmer might turn out. I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't see it, I won't ask. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. And mm. are you the type of person that has a sketchbook in your hands all the time, especially when you travel? <laughs> Well, when you uh, travel. <laughs> well, not really. No, I mean, I doodle a lot. And I, like yeah. all my old uh, copy books from national school and that, I, well, I only kept a couple of them. But I mean, it's funny, there's all these pictures of tanks and airplanes and things really? going on. <laughs> you wow. know, uh, so uh, yeah, I did a lot of that, a lot of doodling, and I still do. I'll be out in the studio, you know, covering pages with small, you know, thumbnails. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you look at thumbnails and pick a few and then they get enlarged a bit and then get enlarged again and finally maybe reach a canvas or whatever. And uh, well, that's one of the things about etching when you when you work with etching. If, if you don't make enough preparatory studies before you start working into plates, you if you want to change something on a plate, it can take you days, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you've got to be awfully careful to get an idea or a form fairly right depending on what you're doing and so on um, and uh, with painting it's wonderful because you can make those changes in seconds or minutes and uh, yeah I mean uh, mistakes are part of the fun and games you know there's just all the time you're rearranging stuff you know but with you, etching, that's that's awfully difficult you know so do you miss etching are you gonna get like do you still do a little bit or have a uh, little bit, yeah, but uh, um, not at the moment. It just depends, but that doesn't mean I won't do more, you know, next year or whatever, you know. Yeah, so uh, just at the moment I've eased off on it. And uh, I suppose because I've a run of ideas going, you know, with the tractors yeah. and barns and so on, and uh, I'm enjoying working on that ser on these series, and I'll keep at it for a while and develop it maybe now as <laughs> Oh, say into yeah. buses who knows that. train trains might appear yeah who knows yeah. <laughs> mm. and last question john what mm. were, like who was your inspirations growing up um is there anyone that really stood out and reflected on your work uh let's see well yeah i mean uh, as regards other artists you oh, know yeah. i mean a lot of people that admire uh, um like hopper for instance oh, you yeah know. Like, you can see the the, the reflection of that all right yeah 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 and then uh you know i always like the scottish and british painters between the wars you know different people uh like Cornella clough and so on and uh american artists like uh, milton avery then as well uh you know a, a different approach to color and form mm -hmm. i don't paint like him obviously but uh and uh, lately, Philip Guston, you know, um, mm. he uh, kind of paints between cartoon and uh, and somewhere with a very elemental um, mm. sense, a primitive sense almost, you know. And, uh, yeah. you know, the tra the, like in, in a way, uh, if you can find a path, you know, that's between abstraction and figurative, you know, that has a power um, yeah. of some yeah. kind. It's uh, yeah. it's a nice area to explore. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you know, I so. that. Well, I can't thank you enough. It's been such a fun week. I really enjoyed chatting to you and getting to know yeah. your background. Um, right. Keep doing, keep doing what you're doing because we love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Thanks very much. Yeah, Not nice talking to you. I'm looking to seeing the farmer soon in the gallery then. Oh, all right. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> exactly. So much, Cheers. Take Thanks, care. Have a nice evening.